Hey everybody, welcome back to Let's Talk. My name is John, and today here on the channel, we're going to be talking about 2016's The Accountant, and it's 2017 4K Blu-ray, and see how well that 4K Blu-ray has aged. But before we get into that 4K Blu-ray review, I always like to give a film review, and this film review is going to be filled with spoilers, so if you want to know nothing about The Accountant, you guys can skip ahead right now. So The Accountant was released in 2016 and is directed by Gavin O'Connor who has directed some of the best sports films ever in 2004's Miracle and Warrior. He also directed a movie from a few years ago that involves basketball called The Way Back, also teaming up him and Ben Affleck. Ben Affleck plays an alcoholic who gets a break being a high school basketball coach and we get to see him on The Way Back as he deals with his issues but in this movie he plays The Accountant. A man on the autism scale and we never know exactly where he is on the autistic scale and that's one big thing about this movie and when I was reading criticisms of this movie they said this wasn't a very accurate portrayal of a person with autism and I don't know for sure I'm no expert on autism and I don't want to say something that I don't know for sure about but I did read that Gavin O'Connor and Ben Affleck went into this with the best of intentions they tried to give a very authentic performance they basically tried to make a hero for autistic people and I don't know if that came across a hundred percent through the film itself but the film itself is still really good I just do not know for sure if that is accurate I really can't comment on it because I'm just not an expert on it but when it comes to the film Ben Affleck does play this this accountant, an accountant with a very dark side to him. What the fuck? Now we do not realize at the very beginning of this movie because the mystery just starts to unfold for us as we go throughout this film. It's the same thing with J.K. Simmons' character. He seems like he's going to be a one-note government official who has information on a character and he's going to use that to leverage her. But really he has better intentions as well because he at the beginning of this movie is also on the hunt for the accountant. But why is that? We see some flashbacks to when he was a kid. We see that his father is an army guy and he cares about his kids. He's a good dad and he goes to this home with his wife, the mother of Ben Affleck and his brother who we would later find out another big character in this movie it's a big reveal at the end of this movie but early in the movie we see that they take him to a home you know to get diagnosed with his autism and they're like you know bring him here it's a quiet environment we'll deal with him you know he has very bad sensory overload and he doesn't know how to deal with that and the father's like you know what we're gonna do if he has sensory overload we're gonna overload him even more so he learns how to adjust to his problems and he become a functional adult in society instead of being somebody who lives in a home like this for the rest of their lives he's like he can be a functional adult we just gotta face this head on you know we're gonna put flashing lights in front of him we're gonna blast music as loud as possible you know really make him feel as comfortable as possible and as we see ben affleck has took that head on and he learns to deal with that you know his father's a military guy so of course he thinks that routine is important to him and we see that he has become a very successful accountant it also turns out he's a very successful hitman as well he can do anything he focuses his mind on Everything for him is very routine based. You know, he only has one fork and knife in his draw. Not much in his house. He drives an F-150. But again, that dark side to him, we get to get more and more glimpses of it and more about his past and how his father was training him and his brother to be these kick-ass hitmen. And as the movie continues to unfold, he gets a job working for John Lithgow, trying to find the leak in that company. He gets teamed up with Anna Kendrick, who I absolutely love in everything she's in. And this movie actually did kind of remind me of, eh, very similar in tone, very different stories and plots, but similar in tone to another Anna Kendrick movie called A Simple Favor. I thought that this movie had a very similar thriller kind of feel to it. Also very similar to the movie Limitless. The 2000s and 2010s were just filled with these thrillers, these action thrillers that you could just go into, have a good time, and then you kind of forget about them. Look at movies like Brooklyn's Finest, Law Abiding Citizen, movies like that. You know, you have a good time, but you only revisit them every three or four years because they're never hitting those like 10 out of 10 levels of films. They're more like in that seven to eight, which is fine. Not every movie needs to be a masterpiece. Some movies just need to be a good time at the theaters. You know, this is a very good thriller that is pulling layers away from these characters and letting the story unfold. Now, the cinematography might not be the greatest. I think that's one thing that holds it back. The actual audio design is pretty good, but it does feel a little bit generic at points. So this doesn't feel like a very special movie. It just feels like a very good movie. The kind of movie like a Saturday or Sunday matinee. You turn it on every two or three years because as the movie unfolds and we get to have this story unwind even more, we find out a little bit more about J.K. Simmons' character, how he has this connection to the accountant. The accountant, even though he follows his own moral code, he might do some dark stuff. But in the end of the day, he does mean well. He wants to do good for people like him. And at the very end of this movie, it's revealed that the hitman we've seen throughout this movie, John Bernthal, who is just overacting his ass off throughout this film, but he's clearly having a great time. Him and Ben Affleck turn out to be brothers. We saw the two kid brothers as we were growing up. We didn't really know too much about who the other brother was. He was just kind of always there. We knew he was trading along with Ben Affleck, but he just kind of disappeared. We see in the movie that the dad 
that Ben Affleck went to the mother's funeral because she's a terrible person. She starts an entire new family and just pretended that the other two kids and the husband didn't exist. And then she goes to her grave, basically never saying goodbye. John Bernthal can't forgive her. And obviously he's mad at the dad and Ben Affleck, but they make up in this big shootout scene at the very end of the movie. And it's revealed to us, you know what? We're going to get together in a week. Ben Affleck's like, I'll find you because Ben Affleck is the more skilled assassin. It's probably the more skilled person because this is all he focuses his energy on. Whereas John Bernthal, you know, he's kind of having a good time. And even though he had a very dark childhood as well, he's a little bit more lighthearted about it. Whereas Ben Affleck plays this role very serious. And that's the thing with Ben Affleck. You know, you kind of want those edges where you get to see the old Ben Affleck, you know, the more flashy Ben Affleck. But he is so committed to his character. You never get that. This character is not going to change because he's already at his peak of what his character can be. He's already mastered it. So you're not going to get those big emotional moments from Ben Affleck. The closest we get is a scene with him and Anna Kendrick in this movie where he's like, even though I want to have these good social skills, I just don't, even though I do kind of feel inside of me. So that's the closest we get. But again, him and Anna Kendrick have great chemistry. J.K. Simmons is great in this movie as well. And of course, it does set up the possibility of a sequel, which is what I think they were going for in 2016. It just took a long time for them to really get the sequel off the ground, but it's definitely coming over at Amazon. And I'm all for it. As long as it's just as entertaining as this movie, there are definitely areas to improve upon, but the acting is still world class this movie i really enjoyed the story and plot it's really just the sound design the cinematography and a little bit of the melodrama aspects of this film that really drag it down to that seven to eight out of ten range but it is still a great film and i definitely can recommend you checking it out and if you do want to check it out maybe you want to check out this 4k blu-ray that we're going to talk about right now can our son lead a normal life well, here it is. This 4K Blu-ray was actually released in January of 2017. That means that this 4K Blu-ray is now over seven years old. This came out in the early days of 4K Blu-ray, and you can really tell because this came out at the same time as the Blu-ray, as the DVD, and they didn't really know what the 4K Blu-ray format was at the time. And this is a Warner Brothers release, so even back in 2017, we only get HDR10 on it. We do get a Dolby True HD 7.1 on here, which is pretty cool. It's almost basically a Dolby Atmos track, and honestly, that was a very disappointing audio track you really don't get to feel it until the action sequences and really the most flair we ever had of that audio track was in the third act of this movie and just everything about this 4k blu-ray kind of just just feels like a let's get this movie out there kind of 4k blu-ray from the studio a lot of like what they were doing with the blu-rays and a lot of that you could just see in the packaging alone now i don't remember if this had a slip cover on it when it came out in 2017 i mean this was always floating around the best buy shelves it was over there so you know they printed so many of these and you could also tell because this 4k blu-ray to this very day is it's always on sale. You can get this for like $5 if you wait around to the perfect time. But when you come inside, it is a two disc set. But one thing I want to show you guys, you don't see this too much with 4K Blu-rays. This is one of the recycling cases. You saw that with a lot with Blu-rays, mainly because, you know, a cheap $5 Blu-ray, you saw it in a bin. It was usually in the recycling cases. But this with the 4K Blu-ray, so you do get the Blu-ray and you get that 4K Blu-ray. All of your extras, like most movies, are on that Blu-ray disc. You get a very cheap looking menu in there. The Blu-ray disc has just as many previews as AMC likes to have before their movies. We make movies better. So you have to skip ahead. That's something that we've pretty much moved past in 2024 is previews on the disc because everybody knows you can skip it. It's the world of YouTube. If you want to watch a trailer, it's on there. Or you could go to your local AMC and they'll play every trailer ever. But how is that Blu-ray to 4K Blu-ray comparison when it comes to the visuals? Like I was saying, the audio isn't great. It didn't blow me away. The extras, you only get three of them on here. And they're all right, but they're clearly just, let's put them on the disc featurettes. You do get a good amount of information in there, but as much information as you can get in max a half hour about a film, it really isn't that important impressive and again it's more of a marketing tool than actually going deep diving into the film itself but you do get interviews with Gavin O'Connor and Ben Affleck so I did appreciate that you get to learn about their process of making this film as well I just would have liked a little bit more of it but the visuals are what you're here to find out this movie was actually shot on 35 millimeter film which you think lends itself great to the 4k blu-ray format well this movie was shot on 35 millimeter film then scanned for digital and it was only scanned up to 2k so that means that this 4k blu-ray is actually a 2k intermediate it's not a native 4k blu-rays so the actual scan is a 2k so if you go down to 1080p and then you jump up to 4k blu-ray really what we're going to see is more of an hdr thing than an actual level of detail thing because the level of detail is not that much of a difference between the blu-ray and 4k blu-ray i guess if you're like sitting there and you know you got your eye on every single aspect of the screen the 4k blu-ray does have more detail but it's not enough because it's not a native 4k blu-ray so we're not going to get that full resolution that you want and the hdr 10 it's not that impressive like a modern 2024 4k blu-ray all 
all it really does is just kind of brighten things up from the blu-ray it doesn't really hit those deep blacks it's, and it does have some moments where it impresses you you know it's still a 2016 film so i can't sit here and say oh it's a bad looking movie but when you compare it to modern day 4k blu-rays seven years it really is starting to show its age and again it's shot on 35 millimeter film if we just rescan that now have native 4k on it give us some hdr or adobe vision give it a 2024 update this 4k blu-ray could actually be very impressive from a visual standpoint and from an audio standpoint it definitely does need an upgrade i just think they need to do a little bit more fine tuning it just kind of feels like they ran this audio through a system and this is what it spit back out of them it doesn't feel like it was mixed with a lot of care and i just feel like a lot of this 4k blu-ray wasn't made with a lot of care this just feels like oh people like this movie in theaters let's get this out on the shelves and that's what it was like back in 2017 you know let's get this movie on the shelves the people who like this movie they're going to come and grab it 4k blu-ray is new they probably didn't know what the sales were going to be like and they clearly didn't put as much effort into the 4k blu-ray itself they just kind of upscaled it and whatever the computer did that's what we ended up with and that's why this 4k blu-ray is always on sale because clearly they printed so many of them and they have no desire to upgrade them you know it's owned by amazon now maybe we'll get a new scan of this but i highly highly doubt it but either way i'm definitely looking forward to the accountant too because i do really enjoy this movie i just don't absolutely love this movie and this 4k blu-ray there's nothing really offensive about about it just like the movie but it's also not very special and it's definitely showing its age seven years later so how would i rate the accountant on 4k blu-ray on a score of one to ten unfortunately i have to give it an all right 7.5 out of ten it definitely needs some work but the good thing about this movie is in this 4k blu-ray it's always on sale for a very low price and if you don't own the account and you're a fan of the movie i can recommend it even if you don't want to buy it just for the 4k blu-ray and you just want the blu-ray that's packed in there the blu-ray and 4k blu-ray do not have much of a difference so you're not going to be disappointed either way but it definitely does need an upgrade and i'm not too sure we'll ever get that but you know what i'll keep my fingers crossed and maybe one day we will thanks for sticking around to the end of this video we hope you enjoyed it but it is friday and that means it's time for our digital code giveaway in every single video we do on friday we're going to ask you guys two digital code giveaway questions all you have to do is answer one of those questions in the comment section below as long as you do that you come back to tuesday's video we put your name on a magic wheel we spin that wheel two times the two names that lands on they have their choice of the digital codes that you've seen on your screen before you today and this week you know we were talking ben affleck with the accountant i want to know from you guys what is your favorite ben affleck movie and earlier in the week we were talking about comedy and i want to know from you guys what is your favorite comedy of all time it doesn't matter what decade of it it doesn't matter what decade it is i just want to know what movie made you guys laugh more than any other leave those answers in the comment section below and then while you're down there don't forget to hit this like button hit that subscribe button turn notifications on share the video believe it or not all that stuff does help this channel to keep growing the algorithm is a real thing and it really needs all the help all the push it can get and we also have channel memberships if you want to support us that way. We have a Friends of the Channel tier. We have a Producers tier where you're going to find John Del Juggalo, Jason Martin, and Mr. Smelly Potato. We also have a Director's tier where you're going to find Frank from Frank's Media and Reviews. Head over to his channel and John Del Juggalo's channel. Check them out. Subscribe. And I promise you, you won't be disappointed. But if you got no money to throw our way, don't you guys worry about it. We just appreciate you checking out the video. All we hope is that you enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure you guys get out in those streets. Tell your friends about us. And then... We'll be seeing you around.